No, no, no. I'm not on yet. Did I? Ah, that's better. So, last year has been an amazing year in Samba, and in particular in Samba replication. So, um, it really has been the year of replication in Samba 4, and I thought I would give a, a little bit of a talk about what we've done, and then a demo, and then hopefully lots of questions, given that was so popular last year. Um, I now work for Cisco Systems, but um, I don't speak for them. This is, uh, these views are mine, and, and um, in respect to the Samba team, uh, don't ask me questions about what Cisco is doing with all this. Uh, that's not something I can really chat about, but um, it's, a, um, it's, it's been a, a pleasure to, to work with them on Samba 4 development, and I know I have some of my Samba colleagues in the audience, Yorma of Noise in the front, and I saw Jeremy Ellison wandering up the stairs, so presumably he's in here somewhere. Um, so I've been developing Samba for nine years now, it seems. Um, I have to keep counting. Um, so I've been one of the lead developers on the Samba 4 project for the last four or so of them, I think. I think um, and um, that's, that's been great fun. So, um, and I've managed to find companies that have allowed me to work full-time on Samba 4, and that, that's been a true pleasure. Um, and one thing is that while I can't see you all very well due to this dazzling amount of lights up here, I really do want questions during the talk. I'd much rather this talk was drastically sidetracked by someone's question than I actually get to the end of my slides. I also have a demo at the end, which means there's plenty of padding, and um, so uh, questions, without questions, it's going to get rather boring. So what are we talking about when we're talking about SAM before? Um, I'm not really talking about some of the other things it can do. It's got a, a file server in it and a few other things. I'm talking about domain control, being an Active Directory compatible domain controller in every sense of that. Of, of that. Until we can do everything, there will be problems with deploying it into the enterprise. So we now do replication of users and groups. We don't yet have the file system replication protocols that go with uh, Active Directory. Um, there are other ways we can skill, uh, skin that cat if we need to. Uh, but, uh, but replication of users and groups is absolutely critical to any real use of Samba or any domain controller. And it's not just, um, <coughs> and, this, and here we're talking about between domain controls. We're not talking about situations where you may wish to replicate data, for example, from a uh, HR management system into the directory or replicating out into some other management system. We're talking about the domain control to domain controller replication, particularly of passwords, because traditionally that has been the area where all the other solutions have been weakest. For example, you can go and, and buy numerous products which will claim to replicate to and from AD, and as soon as you ask them, okay, and how do you handle the passwords, it's uh, uh, uh. Or, 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 or the better answer is, please install this piece of software on every one of your domain controllers. And it, it pretends to be a password quality filter. These aren't good answers. They, these are not satisfactory answers for the enterprise. We want Samba to be safer to deploy. It's not really safe yet. Is any software safe? But we want it to be safer. We want, we want Samba for to be able to be in a cluster of multiple domain controllers, we want to say before to be an extra domain controller on the side of your network. Without um, good bi-directional replication of Windows, we cannot be those things. And how many here enjoy having single points of failure on your network? Ah, Julian's game. So when I spoke to you last, Sam before was useful. I tried to drum up all sorts of interest. I didn't get any, but I tried to. Um, but it was really only suitable for greenfield sites or a site with only one domain controller or someone who was really willing to cut and run. So that's not very many of you as far as I, as I could tell um, because cut and run is really, really dangerous. And you can keep testing it out and things, but... We all had for a long time the technology to vampire an existing Active Directory domain, preserving all the attributes and things. That all sort of worked. You then go and shut down your very last Active Directory domain controller, start up SAM before, and then turn on the clients. And you'd hope everything works, because if it didn't, as soon as one of those domain, those domain member servers changes its password, as soon as a user changes their password, as soon as anything starts changing the directory, then you're out of sync. If you were to go back to Windows, start all the Windows back up, decide this was a really bad idea, and I just, you know, and I hope my management didn't notice, you'd have to go to any of those things that changed to make sure that they're updated again. For example, go back to users and say, you changed your password. 
Uh, can you change it again? Remember what you had before and change it again? And I go, ooh, ooh, okay. And suddenly machines, so you'd have to go and rejoin them and things. There wasn't a way to say, okay, look, this isn't really working out well for us, but we want to send those changes back into the, into the main record of the domain. And we'll just leave the Samba thing alone for a bit and we'll try again later. We didn't have that possibility. Now, as of Alpha 11, we can do that. Um, we have uh, Samba is much more suitable for these existing domains because we can join into the bidirectional replication stream. And so that means that we can then turn back off a Samba 4 domain controller and everything else in the network should still keep working. Now, it's still possible that Samba may write incorrect data and replicate it to your replication partners. So it's not foolproof. We're working on some things that will be one level safer than this again. Uh, but at least we, you know, it, it's an improved situation. Last year, I sort of fudged over the question of replication because we had things like the LDAP backend. And it works really, really well for a situation where you don't want to talk to Windows at all. Except in LDAP, there's no transactions. So if we go to modify two things in the directory, and we need to make sure they were modified at exactly the same time, we can't actually do that. And it only works for those Greenfield sites, the sites that are willing to um, completely build their new network from scratch. So while the LDAP backend is an excellent piece of technology, and it's something that Red Hat will be using, for example, in one of their uh, projects, Free IPA, uh, it's not really the, it, the focus of the Samba team um, in terms of where to store our data. The best place to store our data really has to be in our own local directory that is um, where we can enforce our own transactions and where we've got control of this tax top to bottom. I know it's very much not invented here syndrome and all sorts of things like that, but we've found that uh, it is what we need for the moment. Which brings us to DRS replication. The directory replication service, it's, it's all a bit you know, recursive here, but um, native replication in Windows, supported in both directions and supported with Samba providing the initial seed or from your existing Windows domain. When we started working on this, we only had the, uh, the initial, um, only had the ability to have Windows as the seed. And so you could go Windows to Samba, and eventually we got Windows to Samba to Windows. But we have worked in the last few months uh, to the stage where we now have Samba to Windows, and it fully accepts that we can actually uh, start an Active Directory uh, forest with the information that we have collected in our source tree. And that's enough to generate up everything that the Windows domain controls need to operate. So this um, allows, for example, if you found that you had a particular application that needed to have a Windows server in your domain, uh, perhaps there's some, something it needed to, that a tool needs to run on a domain control or something, you can add that to the existing Samba domain. It also makes our testing a lot easier. Uh, and so um, that's what I'm going to be giving you a demo of in not very long now, because I'm running through these slides too fast. I want questions. Come on. <laughs> OK, questions. Good. Just a quick one, and forgive my ignorance. Um, there are multiple versions of Active Directory. Mm -hmm. Which version are you talking about being able to replicate to? We currently have replicated with Windows 2003, 2008, and 2008 R2. We don't yet implement all the functions that each of those um, levels of Active Directory um, supports. There's lots of things that come when you say, I am one of these. And a lot of these we just don't do, but we've done enough of them that those three products do actually replicate from us correctly. Cool. Um, there's a large amount of work still to do, but... Uh, Uh, all of this replication, bidirectional replication, how does this uh, relate, if at all, to CTDB and clustering? Uh, the bidirectional replication with DRS isn't at all related to CTDB and clustering. Um, the, um, it's, it's actually it's a distributed database which, where each one keeps its own separately maintained copy and where it's, it really is properly distributed. It can be distributed across an email link, uh, which is quite different to the very tight clustered model um, that CTDB is, has to maintain because it's trying to uh, present as one single server in a data model that wasn't intended to be replicable. Um, and so, no, they're, they're very, very, very different and not, and not connected at all. 
So can you cluster SAM before? There's really no need to cluster domain controllers um, because it, it's already built into the um, into the protocol that there is multiple ones and the client should choose separate domain controllers. So there's really no need to try and present them as if they were one image. Um, and as soon as you introduce clustering, um, as most sysadmins have been anywhere near it find out, the complexity rises so quickly. So if you, if you can instead avoid it at the protocol level, then, then you do very well. So no, we won't be clustering SAM before in that way. Um, I think we've got a question up the back. And I know you've been waiting. Oh, you've got a mic. Good. I didn't think you had a mic yet. The, the, you say that the LAT backend is not supported. So I guess you're going to tell us wh how this, uh, what the, the backend is with this system? Uh, the, the backend is um, backed onto um, our local TDB files. That's the okay. Samba's uh, trivial database, which is, uh, does transactions and things. Uh, the other backend still exists, and we still try and keep it working, but it... Um, it is shown in our recent work that it's not going to be uh, the best back end for a lot of things we're trying to do. Uh, Julian? Hey, um, so I have a SAM before syncing off a customer's AD in, in the example I'm thinking of. Can I also have, can I have Samba then do the feed into an LDAP database somewhat better than probably most of the syncing products? Albeit questions of passwords aside. No, well, question is the password's inclusive. That's the best bit. Is that, yes, I think it would be really... Um, I could really imagine a situation where you had a customer and you wanted to be able to synchronise their passwords and you set up Samba as an extra domain controller, perhaps a read-only DC that's allowed passwords. That's the technology Windows 2008 has. And then, because you've then got it in a database that you've got full access to, you can then do what you like in terms of querying that to synchronise your LDAP product. And as long as you're willing to change how you store your passwords in your LDAP product, to a hash format that Windows uses, then you can indeed just keep having the passwords come in. And so yes, I think that's quite a viable way of using it. Yes. Will Samba 4 provide an LDAP service as a front end? Yes. Can I Sam query using LDAP? Yes, yes. Samba 4 will and must provide um, an LDAP listener that behaves like um, the Active Directory LDAP listener. This is where some of the confusion gets in. Because Samba 4 must be an LDAP server, but we also have the ability to use some existing LDAP products as a data store. Uh, but we can't have them listen on port 389 on our IP address because we need to be there. Uh, so we either bump them to a different port or IT tend to prefer they're hidden behind Unix main sockets. That way we make sure no one's accidentally writing to our database behind our backs. Is that currently implemented, yeah, LDAP th server? Yeah, that, that's implemented, um, but without transactions it's not as safe. And uh, it tends to break a bit more often than other things because it's not our primary test platform. Um, but people do come around and keep fixing it up afterwards. And uh, it's something I've maintained for a number of years. So I'm going to keep it around because I put a lot of wet work into that. But it's, it's increasingly obvious that it's not going to be the primary use model. Uh, we'll, when we get to scalability issues that, for example, OpenLDAP really has you know, lifts. They, they know how to scale. We're probably going to have to learn that the hard way again because of the things we need. Or we'll go and tell Howard Chu, look, we really, really need this. And we'll see what he comes back with, um, we, which gives us some options, which, which is quite useful. At the moment, we're, we're, the local database seems to be the best one. And we can prove things right there and give folks like our two, one of the primary open LDAP maintainers, a really good, we need exactly these things and that, so that he's got a spec to work to rather than just, you know, guesses. Um, uh, question up the back. Um, you said you've got LDAP front ends. Does that also apply to Kerberos and DNS? Uh, we have our own KDC. We use the Heimdall code base and put our own listener on it and our own back end database. Um, because you can't, um, you can't just stick a generic KDC in there because you won't get the pack, which was infamous, Microsoft's infamous addition to Kerberos, but there's a lot more details than just the pack. There's a lot of other things, they, little detail changes they made. Um, and so we're able to use, um, we use the Heindel code to process the packet, and it ends up as a database query. We interpret that query uh, and feed back the values Heindel needs to go back to the client uh, and attach a pack. Um, and we handle all the sockets top to bottom, so you don't really know that there's another code base in there. It's just plugged in as a library, effectively. Um, and also DNS? DNS, uh, we look like we'll be using Bind uh, to do that. Um, we need the DNS server to be backed onto the uh, LDAP server uh, because Microsoft replicates its DNS data using the DRS, and we can export that as LDAP. Um, 
there is already plugins for Bind to talk to LDAP, and there are people working on making that work well, including uh, Red Hat's doing some work for their free IPA project, and we're looking to try and use their work and then just customise it to, to talk to our schema. Uh, so that's, um, that's very promising, actually, because we weren't sure... We didn't want to implement our own DNS server, if at all possible. Um, so uh, we yeah, do have any lack of information on uh, Microsoft internals or the Windows internals? Are you fully provided with the documentation? Uh, we're provided with a, a lot of documentation. Jeremy Allison may will be talking a bit about some of how that works and doesn't and um, in his talk. Um, Azure works quite well, but there's other things that get challenging. Um, so we, we get not about the internals of Windows. We don't need their source code. We just need to know whenever it leaves, the, uh, it, whenever it crosses the wire, we need, need to know what crosses the wire and why. And um, we do get a lot of that documentation uh, as required by the uh, European judgment and then Microsoft's... Um, quite um, expansive compliance with that. Having had to comply, they seem to have done a very good job at it. Um, and so we've got a good working relationship with Microsoft engineers who uh, help give us documentation um, and um, a large doc set that's now up on the web. Uh, but that cooperation is based solely on coercion from the part of EU. Sorry, I didn't quite uh, get that. Uh, cooperation on the part of the Microsoft, of their engineers. Are they willing to cooperate with you or just because they have to? The engineers we work with are highly cooperative because they enjoy working with us. Okay. Um, you know, the, 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 we, the guys were, were telling us that you know, this, is, this is their favourite week of the year when we came to town because we're a fun bunch of engineers who get to hang around and hack. Um, so, um, but, I mean, yeah, as, as Jeremy heckles, um, that, you know, there's a requirement that, that's set up that Microsoft has this business area that does it, but the engineers who work there are not working there begrudgingly. They, they, they seem to love what they do. And um, and so we're very glad. And it, it's not we're not usually working, say, with people in the pro in the Active Directory product group. Although we can get questions put to them, um, it's um, there's a, they've got a, there's a whole group that's dedicated to uh, this protocol doc stuff. Um, and so we get to work with them, and they're very you know they love their part of the job. They've clearly chosen to work in that area. Uh, so that 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 interaction isn't stressful. Um, but uh, yeah, talk to Jeremy for um, some of the, the challenges in that. Um, so, making things safe. Oh, I've got one more question. Um, you were saying how OpenLDAP's really done scalability well. Where is where's M4 at in terms of scalability at the moment? Improving, but what, but but from a pretty shocking base. Um, you know, we've had some we've uh, had some some things where we've found um, you know adding a thousand users and it was taking like forever, and they're just silly indexing bugs and things. So we've got a long way to go in that in that area. Uh, but at least database scalability is a known problem and, you know, the algorithms are understood. But um, I can't give you speed numbers and things with really at the moment of, of trying to, you know, get things correct and handle a few thousand users without it being a problem. But um, running some test scripts to run it up to 100,000, just see what blows out is, is some of the things that can be done at some point. Um, and uh, when, and we've, we've had people, you know, write tests that do some of that and that's put, said, OK, look, that taking five minutes is silly. It shouldn't take that long, and when we go and we clean that up. And so it's a bit reactive based on test cases that we've got in front of us. Um, so and we just try and do what we can. Um, but it's, um, yeah, uh, when, when that becomes a big issue, then uh, there's a kind of, people like Trish are very good on this, these kind of issues. They understand the algorithms well, and I, I, I don't worry that we won't be able to solve those things. Uh, okay, any other questions? Okay, so the read-only domain controller is our next task in the replication area. Um, in Windows 2008 functional level, there is the ability to say that some of these domain controllers have got copies of the database, perhaps apart from the passwords, uh, although we prefer with the passwords, uh, but they can't write those changes back. Now, um, the idea is that you put this thing in an insecure branch office, and when someone break, breaks in and you know, potentially uh, subverts the server, it can't break back into the corporate network. So we're... Um, um, but it also means that Buggy Samba can't infect the corporate network with incorrect data. And so we like the idea of becoming something that Microsoft's own people guarantee can't break things because otherwise it would be a security hole in their products. Uh, so that's attractive to us and um, we're hoping to do that in the next few weeks. Uh, we're making some very good progress in this area. I don't believe this will be a challenge. Um, there are remaining risks. Um, access control. Uh, we haven't fully locked down our LDB stack at the moment. Uh, it's actually since the last alpha we've added 
some controls that say, by the way, ignore the ACLs, and we need to make sure that those controls can't be then added from the, uh, from the network. That would be unfortunate. Um, we, um, we could potentially mislead clients and therefore break the network by having the, um, the clients believe one thing, that believe something isn't true. For example, they could believe that there aren't any group policies, so the group policies are something different to what they really are. Um, there could be other disasters in the same before code. This isn't perfect code, but it's a darn sight better than it was last year, and we're making some amazing progress. And um, it's at the stage where we do have people running same before in production. Um, the other big risk is that if we are replicating with Windows, we found that Windows does not do any validation whatsoever, or very little validation, of what we send it across the replication protocol. The security boundary is the forest, and anyone who's inside that forest can effectively change anything and change it to, you know, we've had bugs where we haven't sorted things the right way, and we've basically randomly renamed and scrambled uh, a whole entry, because if it's um, if things aren't sorted, then the number then and it's doing a merge, and then numbers won't match up. They're very very unhappy. Uh, similarly, if we get some of our, our tables of names to numbers mixed up, it can be very very messy, and find that you have descriptions that look like object classes and object classes that look like you know passwords and you know, not happy. Yes, um, and we have things to do. We have a lot of things to do. We have admin tools that we really don't have. We have uh, multi-domain forests. We don't yet do any. It's just one for, one domain per forest at the moment. Um, we're just now getting some tools to handle role management. Things like saying, "I wish to become the RID master. I wish to become the PDC emulator, and things." But these things need a fair bit more work some, to to get uh, done. DNS, uh, I talked about our thoughts in the way we would um, make the domain name server and back that on to everything we need. But at the moment, all we can do is generate up a, a static zone file and put it into start once. As soon as you add another domain controller, you have to manually edit the file or use a, Trid just hacked up a script for me that'll automatically do it for my demo. But um, it's not something you can put into production. Um, and we have a very, very long list of to-do items that we put on the wiki. We've got a DRS to-do list on the wiki. Um, which we're using to track some of these little tasks that we're doing. We should put things in Bugzilla, but this seems it's just a bit easier for um, a, full, a bit of a list of things that we that we come across when we're hacking, and we know that we need to get done. Um, as the question was before, as to which versions of the domain controller we interoperate with, these are the three that we've tested with. We have my secret Russian production site that's been running Samba for uh, well over 18 months now and um, through lots of trials and tribulations, but um, successfully. Um, he doesn't like to talk about his company's name. Um, but, and we have a few others. There are people who pop up and say they're running Samba 4, but as I don't hear much back from them, and I know there have been disasters in the last little while and things that don't, don't work, I'm, I'm less, you know, I really trust this one site because I'm working regularly with the sysadmin who's having trouble and having a lot of success, but you know, he's telling us about things that he needs to improve and doing a lot of work himself as well, we're getting good patches from him. Um, but um, we know, so we know it can run and can run long term, and which means we've found out things like password expiries and had passwords and machine account changes and some of those things that only happen when actually running a site for quite a while because it takes months for those things to time out and then go through and do their thing. Um, so we're, we're, very, we're very confident that it can run with the right, uh, right kind of sysadmin, the kind of person who doesn't mind getting down into the code if needed. Uh, or at least be able to you know, get us GDB backtraces and work with us and upgrade to a new, new Git version. Um, so I didn't get much interest out of the sysadmin mini-conf last year in terms of people wanting to try SAM before. Um, so I was wondering, have you eliminated all your Windows clients? <laughs> um, or what are we not doing right that would, would, would help you to, to help us test SAM before? And I got this question last year, and we thought about it a bit afterwards. Um, no, no, we can't just go and bless this. What, what we've got is version 1.0, so that you can go and slip it into your production networks and under your boss's nose. Um, if, you, if you can't then pull from the Git tree to fix the problems that you report, um, if you can't actually look in your boss's eye and say, by the way, we're testing this thing out, then um, it's probably not for you. It's, um, I really don't need to be tarred with that, you know, that disaster. Um, I really want to work with people who can work with us on fixing some of these uh, issues and getting an amazing product for us all. Um, 
because we really we're working hard at it. We're getting some really great results, but we do need people trying it out and finding out where uh, what things still need to be done. It's it's sometimes hard just to figure out where to put some of the, the effort of which new features are needed, and some of that comes from which software you're interoperating with. Uh, question. Can we have the mic on? Yeah, it's on, but try it again. It's on. Now it's on. <laughs> what will be missing from your version 1.0? Like what big feature set, or is it everything has to go at once for it to be useful? Um, we've got a bit of a list of things that we go towards a beta, and that's about as far as we're looking at the moment. Um, the replication stuff that we're at at the moment is a, is a big part of, um, of things that we thought we were, we were missing. And I used to actually be willing to say, look, we'd beta it without replication. But then we got replication going, and then it's, oh, well, I'm not going to do it until it's done, because it's, really, it's a really dangerous feature to leave half done. Um, other things that we're missing um, are not really worried in terms of putting out some kind of a beta of the Active Directory domain controller portions if the file server is in its current not great state and the printing's not there, because I want to be able to do a beta of those things. And if we, if we were to, and we just need to make it clear as to what's that, it's not... A, We've talked in a blog that Jeremy posted recently about how we're trying to merge all these things back into one, one source code tree. But we may well, um, while we still have a bit of an independent release process for Sam before, we might do a, a beta of the AD stuff. Um, a lot of it's about stability. We've got um, stability of the database format, knowing that we can upgrade things properly. And we've recently gained some scripts that are helping us with that. We're one of, um, actually, my, uh, my, my, one of my administration friends is actually uh, written a script to help move from an old provision of Samba to a new one, for example, when we added elements to the schema, and so it's handling that properly. Um, and so those, those kind of things have, um, are helping us get towards a beta. Um, and I'll have to look back over the list, and then it's just someone's gumption who's willing to actually say, OK, this one's going to be a beta. It's really easy to just keep on churning out alphas. You don't have to think. <laughs> uh, Anyway, um, so a few more questions, and I'm going to start the demo, which I have nicely rigged. So, um, Andrew? Yep. When, uh, when it does go 1.0... Right there, yep. How are we going to pitch this to our Windows people? Um, I'm hoping you'll be able to pitch it, for example, with the read-only DC stuff and saying that branch office that you weren't wa wanting to pay for the Windows license to put in, but the performance kind of sucks. Well, here's something fairly risk-free you can put on. You can just slip in here. And, you know, and it won't break the network, but it'll just make this branch office a little bit faster while remaining secure. Um, I think that'd be a, a good way to pitch it. Um, I know there's, the, there's that massive Unix Windows golf in the, in the sysadmins in so many large companies. Uh, that, that'd probably be the, the way in, I think. It, it would have to be, I would suspect you'd have to pitch it as something that's useful to them and, and low risk. Um, but yeah, it'll be hard. Um, so I do with somewhat absurdly large AD forests on the edge of the gear I run, well north of 100,000 users, mm -hmm. um, is static access to that data useful? Is potentially a feed from that data helpful in testing and scaling Samba? Um, Th these being real ADs that are actively used every single uh, one of those users well, actually... I mean, any, any deployment or attempted deployment is useful to find out about. I mean, we probably find that as soon as we try and sync in that many users, it just takes six hours and we've got problems. But that's, that's something we, you know, if, that's a, if it's some, a serious site that's there, we need to fix those serious problems. Um, of course, we, you know, your, your customer is not going to like us having the data, so... Well, be a that's the thing. It would have to be, it would presumably have to be to an Australian and, or, it, yeah... Yeah, or something would, like that, and, it, 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 you, and yeah, private NDA data. But I think we'd mostly be just be interested in, you know, how what 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 didn't work and what did work, and yeah, you know, those kind of things. Um, and we can construct a hundred thousand users in a database if we need to. Yeah, but the but difference so is this is a real hundred thousand in production actual use. Yeah, type and stuff some, and some the of the real real complexities of a, of the production yeah. as opposed to a hundred thousand users, but they're not in groups, for example. Yeah, or, yeah finding those real um, those realities could be useful. Um. Should some of be used on a purely Linux network? Um, I've been trying to do that at home and it didn't, uh, keep on putting it off. Um, so let me just start my rig demo. 
I've, I've scripted things up so as to avoid steps, avoid mi missing steps because it just gets deadly. Okay, so it was about to run DC promo, but I stopped it. So okay, so here we are doing a provision of Sam before. Uh, takes a little while, sets things up, um, and as soon as that's done, it's going to go and uh, reset my uh, virtual machine that I've got the Windows machine in, and then we're going to see this whole thing start. Um, so some of these. Uh, these, these are some of the bits and pieces that go into it. Um, we generate up a zone file, and that's what you see it restarting named at that point to get the zone file up. Okay, it's starting Vert Manager. Okay. Okay, so Windows is starting. We just need to wait for that to boot. Trish keeps on telling me I should be using VirtualBox because it's got you know perfect virtualization stuff, but I'm a I like running free software top to bottom when I can. Um, another question. You mentioned you want people to start you know, trying Samba 4 and whatnot. Is it safe to use Samba 4 in a 2003 domain or do we need to have 2008 DC so we can run read only? Um, the risk is that we could write uh, some dodgy data back to the domain and um, we haven't really seen too much of that. Um, at least not in the current code. We have, we have, met, we have done it in the past. Um, and so that's that's the risk, um, and we've now got the right filtering and things where we're um, we really shouldn't be writing writing objects back that we haven't touched. Um, it really is a matter of making sure you really do actually have a backup of that domain in case we do screw it up. In which case you will lose things that have changed, and you know it's a mess. But um, it's a matter of your tolerance to risk. I can't tell you it's perfectly safe. It's very new code, um, but um, we don't believe it's overly dangerous. Um, but at the moment we've just been doing it in our testing domains and I'd, I'd encourage you to um, to start by grabbing a domain controller, adding a new Windows domain controller to your domain, then bring it into an isolated test network, um, cut off the wire to the internet, do not allow it anywhere near your existing network and then try things out there because that way you know that at worst you just wipe the disk of that Windows DC and you know nothing, nothing's happened. And that, gives you, that, that perhaps can allow you to test some things with the real data and with real read right back and forward um, without any risk of pollution into the rest of the domain. And then when you're happy that things are working well there, then you can just introduce it into the main domain. Um, let's keep using it, try. Keep, try and use the mic, please. Is, oh, there we go, on there. With 2008 read only, is, would that be, uh, the way you said there before that, would it be a safe way to deploy it then? Yeah, well, one, as soon as we've got the 2008 read-only stuff, um, then Microsoft guarantees that we can't screw up the domain, uh, or else it's a security bug, and then they really need to know about it. And they've asked that we tell them nicely. You know, it, it, because we'll be very carefully reviewing those algorithms and things when we go to implement it ourselves. So, um, but yeah, that should that should be safe. And if it's not, then it's a very serious issue on Microsoft's side that I hope would be addressed. Yep. And there's a question. I'll, I'll take the question at the back first. Um, the, the the actual protocol that uh, the server-to-server DC-to-DC -server, uh, DC replication mm -hmm. uses, is that more or less secure than existing LDAP and Kerberos replication protocols? Um, the protocols, I don't think it's particularly more or less, as long if, if they were... The LDAP replication can be done very dodgily and very insecurely because... Um, but um, it can also be done securely, properly um, Kerberized in, um, connections and things. And once you've got it all wrapped in a, in a Kerberos encryption, that's, they're both about the same kind of security. Um, I don't. There's um, no, I don't think there's sort of much difference between the two. And are you actually doing um, validation of data you get from other servers, unlike AD? Um, yeah, we do a bit of validation partly because we store our data in a different format to AD. Um, and it's not, while it's not possible to validate everything, um, we at least, we actually convert, if it, if it comes across from AD and it says it's an integer, we convert it in, into an integer string in our database because our database is string based. Um, and that means that we do actually have to go through a bit of a validation step on all those things. And so we're probably more likely to notice things, which actually makes us a bit more vulnerable to, there could be just something plain weird in a real forest that we weren't planning on. And so our validation would then fail. Yikes, 10 minutes to go. Oh well, I'll have to quickly run this demo. That time flies. Okay, so let's quickly run in, log in. Da, da, da. No, no. Try again. OK, 
Okay, so in the background here I've got uh, Samba running, and here I've got, um, we're just going to have to wait for it to log into Windows. I meant to do this while we're taking questions. Um, one more question. Yeah, up the front. Uh, that five minutes that you were talking about for 1,000 users, that was to add the add them? That's, that's yeah. the order of one every three seconds or so? Uh, yeah, it, it, it was just that there were oh, over the right. three algorithms in right. there three, and, uh, three that, that aren't there anymore. Uh, so uh, O N to the three. Uh, so yeah, there's just there were just silly algorithms that we were using where adding each user was reallocating every you know an index. There were ten indexes that the user would touch, and each of them was being reallocated each time. And you know lots of you know n squared and n to the three, and and a thousand to the to the three starts getting pretty big. Yeah, it sounds like it could be easily fixed. Yeah, th those and those issues were, and so um, now I'm just going to start here. DC promo. We don't need this screen quite so small. I was trying to make this work on a different resolution before. Okay, just a moment while that thing does its business. Other questions? Yep. Okay, so here we've just got to go through. The, this is the wizard that some of you will have seen before for uh, joining an existing domain. And uh, S4. I think that's right. Okay, so that's found the one domain. Examining the forest, found the site. We don't want it to be a DNS server because we mess with the DNS, but it can be global catalog. Okay. One of our challenges we had at one point is we didn't used to do that call. That actually goes to the server and asks, is this password strong enough? Um, and we didn't implement that for a while. And then when we did, passwords like Samba weren't good enough. So that's going to go through. And uh, this was the really hard bit for ages, on not the um, group policy management, but changing the domain membership and syncing in the objects. The number of times this wizard got run, the number of times that this would get part way and start looping and looping and looping, um, we spent a long time on what will disappear in only a few seconds. Uh, took us uh, months to, to get going and a very, very hard week in Redmond to, to do a lot of the work. Um, so we're almost done here, actually. Uh, with that, it's just going to stop uh, NetLog on and it will go through and sync in the data. Uh, we'll restart. I'll need to jigger with DNS and then we will be able to hopefully see um, the data all replicated onto the uh, Windows Virtual Machine and um, also be able to see the replication, I hope. Um, we just got to wait for it to finish doing this. A question? Yep. Um, so obviously, up until some point, um, you spend a significant amount of time investigating um, protocols that Microsoft wrote in several years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's this uh, court judgment or whatever it was that mandated that, that they must uh, interact with you, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Does that extend to um, developing protocols in tandem with your team? Um, no. So no. Okay. No, there's no, um, there's no, no requirement that Microsoft actually plays by internet norms and, and actually you know works to, to, as far as I know, Jeremy's much more an expert on this, but no, we, um, we, we simply get to be the receiver and we will just continue to hear about changes that have been made. And so... Um, and we get to hear about them in the, about the beta level. There's a requirement that within you know, a week of a beta that they must have the docs or something. Um, but uh, no, we don't get, we're not yet uh, able to collaborate with them on, on actually, I don't know why this is taking so long. Demo may well have not worked for this time. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's sadly, we, we, I've got some ideas. I'd love to see some of these protocols improved in particular ways, but I've had no indication that we'll be able to actually collaborate on that. They do on more standard internet protocols like Kerberos and things, they're starting to play nice. But things that they've developed in house so far, I've seen no sign of them going and asking the community about. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're synchronising in the objects after taking a very long time to. Okay, we've got the schema across, we're trying configuration. There's three uh, containers to bring across, and we used to have this file even getting the schema across. 
and then getting um, getting the configuration it would fail. So the, each of these steps, um, and then actually having this thing finished is something that has only really started happening in the last um, last few months. September was when we first um, had this all working to completion. Um, and um, that was against a uh, domain where it started with Windows, and we've only recently, in the last few weeks, had this work with the domain that started just from Samba. Uh, and so now it just goes through and does a bit of local security, and um, we'll be able to shut down. Uh, other questions? As I quickly run my clock to zero. Uh, you mentioned that um, Samba 4 won't use the clustered TDB backend for obvious reasons as a DC, but when Samba 4 gets out the door, people wanting to run just clustered file servers, not domain controllers. The, 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 the clustered file server functionality is not going to go away. Um, none of the things that Samba does is, is likely to go away anytime soon. They're all there for a reason. Um, and so the file server that's been very well written to do that will, will remain. And I mean, there's, there's commercial products based on this stuff, and people paying to have it developed. There's, uh, there's no reason that will go away. Um, we have a hard time as a team working how we're going to juggle these things together. But there's no there's no particular reason why one means the other. Um, okay, so we've finished that. I now need to just jigger with DNS for a moment. Um, Okay, we just um, this little very nice hack from Truge goes through and um, generates up a zone file based on looking up the host with um, NetBIOS, uh, but it works. Okay, and we've got a question. Did I hear? And okay, restart Windows. This shouldn't take long. In light of that last question, is Samba 4 going to be different as a ignoring its AD functionality? Is it different as a file server from Samba 3 in any way? Um, the way that we try and merge in the Samba 3 and Samba 4 branches and things is a, you know, we've, we posted some things on, in a blog recently about our, our aims for that. The process for how that's all going to happen is a very long and quite painful business that we will work out inside the team. We're not, there's no plan to, you know, arbitrarily drop functionality and things. There's, it really, um, there's a lot of use of the Samba file server and the use cases that people have got there aren't going to go away and we're still going to have code to support that. I'm more um, asking if there's anything new in Samba 4 as a file server. So, uh, new in Samba 4's file server? It's actually got um, most of the, the better bits of that, I think, ended up um, being, because there were some innovative technologies were shown there, I think have been brought across to Samba 3. Um, I expect that anything more that people actually find interesting in real real world uses will, you know, someone will re-implement. I mean, it's only code. Um, and once you demo, demonstrate it working once, then it's pretty easy to implement in another, another context. So... Um, about the only thing Samba 4 does that's particularly interesting in the file server space that's not done elsewhere is that it has um, a SIFS proxy that uh, some people have worked on. So um, pulls apart the SIFS protocol right to the basics and puts it back ag together again. And um, there's some people working on uh, accelerator code based on that. Um, and so I hope we can keep enough of that Samba 4 alive for that project. But um, yeah. So I think my time is almost up, and my Windows machine is almost restarted. Let's see if it decides to live. We do have about 10 minutes until next talk, so if you want to take more questions. OK, we'll see if Windows can reboot. Uh, I don't know, it's a fairly fresh image. It's not looking happy, is it? Oh, well. Well, I do have that. It's just kill the virtual machine, but it got grumpy when I last did that. <laughs> As you might. Um, other questions? While we wait for patiently for Windows to catch up with reality. No other questions? Force off. Die. Try again. Let's see if this works this time.
Okay, that's looking a little healthier, I think. Have you done much testing against uh, Windows 7 clients? Uh, Windows 7 clients, yes, I join Windows 7 clients to Samba domains fairly regularly, and that seems to work. Uh, they did change a few things, but we've got we've got that going. Um, and so, yeah, that uh, seems to work pretty well. Samba 3 domains of current versions run with a couple of um, registry keys set. Um, so, yeah, we've we've got Windows 7 fairly well covered. Um, as well as as well as we can manage with each product, the Samba 3 can only be an NT4 domain controller, and that gives limits. Um, but it seems to work quite nicely. With Samba 4, I actually tend to like it as a virtual machine. You know, they really removed a lot of the heavy weight out of it. It's about as fast to start as XP uh, compared with Vista, which was a absolute bog to run in virtual machines. Okay, so please, please forgive me. Uh, we run an exchange backend, and uh, our Windows guys tell us that Exchange is heavily reliant on Active Directory. Mm. Have you tested uh, with Exchange? I, I haven't tested with Exchange recently, but um, the um, I, I do. There, there a lot of work has gone on to support the Exchange schema for some other. Um, there's an, uh, an also a proprietary alternative to Microsoft Exchange called PostPath that Cisco happened to have acquired, um, and so there's um, as people have worked on making sure we can extend Samba's schema to cope with that, for example. Um, and there's a, um, and so that's the big thing that does. And then we're going to, I'll start running a, a real exchange against it someday to, to try and test things out, because uh, that's yeah, that's really important to be able to keep running Microsoft Exchange, um, if only against a local. Perhaps it's a Windows replica that's kept close to the Exchange box, but we've got to at least be able to cope with all the data and things. Um, yeah, one of the things that it actually introduced was a uh, a new interface for managing users and mailboxes. So. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things when you're building your user interface will be a, uh, a necessity to write to those uh, new interfaces that Exchange yeah. requires. Um, so here I am logging in with the username and password from the domain that we just uh, vampired from, and so it recognises that as local usernames and passwords. Um, yeah, the, um, the need for UI and things, we don't have much UI at all, but um, yes, we need to be able to deal with those attributes. and. Um, we also can just work with the um, Active Directory users and computers and MMC APIs and things as if we're a, a Windows server. So that allows a bit of a transition where existing tools should continue to work against Samba even though you've you know, swapped out some of your domain controllers. Okay, any other questions? Anyway, I'm slowly logging in and I should be able to bring up um, MMC and we should be able to see a, um, a couple of things. But uh, I think we're also rapidly running out of time. The purpose of the Samba project, is it exclusively interoperability with Windows? Or do you actually add some of the features that do not exist on um, the Windows counterpart? Yeah, I, I don't have any objection to adding things that don't exist in Windows, but as long as it's not in conflict with things, as long as we're not going to break other things. For example, I, my hope at some point is to support, for example, the password change set control that OpenLDAP uses. It's a lot nicer way of setting passwords than the way Windows does over LDAP. I don't see any reason not to support that to make it a little easier to integrate into Unix networks that, where that's um, what the Pam LDAP would prefer to, to deal with. Um, so I don't mind a little bit of extension where it's standard and where we're not you know, being gratuitous about it. Uh, we just have to be careful. Um, so... Okay, so we can start up Active Directory... No, oh no, no, it didn't. It really doesn't like me doing that. When I killed it halfway through the startup, it, uh, it got very grumpy. So we're just going to have to leave that there. Um, if I don't kill it halfway through startup, then it works. If I do, then it, it doesn't work. Um, so um, anyway, that's that's where we're at. And that's the end of the demo. Bye. Um, okay. Well, I think I probably should leave a bit of time for the next speaker to, to get up here. <laughs>